Okay, so today we have Lisa. Lisa Marie. I'm going to let Lisa introduce herself. So I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself, Lisa. Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Marie Thalhammer. It goes Lisa Marie Studio on uh, Instagram and social and website. I am an artist that was born off the banks of the Mississippi River in a river town called St. Louis uh, in Missouri in the American heartland. And I knew from a very early age that I wanted to be an artist. Well, I guess when I was younger, there was a couple other things, but by the age of 16, I was definitely on track. I knew I wanted to pursue visual art and that's really been my focus uh, for most of my creative career. I moved, I studied art at the Art Institute of Chicago and at the University of Kansas, um, studied fine art, painting, women's studies, and art history. And then I moved to Washington, D.C., where I became a pretty well-known muralist. I have over a dozen rainbow walls in the nation's capital. My most known piece is the Love Mural in D.C.'s Blagden Alley, which is an L-O-V-E on four different garage doors in a 13 color rainbow spectrum, similar to what you see behind me today. Um, and during the pandemic, I moved back to my hometown of St. Louis, but I still spend a lot of time on the East Coast. And currently I am on a mission to paint love murals in all 50 states. So how many did... helping me with that. <laughs> how many states did you paint in so far? I have done four states, so I am very close to 10% completion of my goal, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. So the, technically there's five love murals because there's also one in DC, but we've done Florida. I did a small, a small piece at Kid Museum in Maryland. There's a piece here in St. Louis, and I just painted another really large one in Hartford, Connecticut. That's good. I don't good even start. know. That is a good start. I don't even know if you need to do the interview anymore because your intro just kind of like probably answered half of the questions I was going to ask. <laughs> we're going to have to get creative. To yep. write we got we got the time. So we're going to get creative here. So tell me this. You say at age 16, you knew I wanted to be like a professional artist, right? Yes. How long have you started creating artwork professionally at that point? Well... I've really always been creating artwork professionally sort of since that age. So I made this deal like I, so I went to the art Institute of Chicago as a pre summer program at the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And that is really the program that made me really dedicated to visual art. Uh, but you know, program was expensive and my dad didn't really want to send me, you know, I didn't have the money for it. He had the money for it. So after a, we, we kind of argued about this a lot at the time when I was younger, and we finally made a deal that he would pay for my tuition if I would paint him a mural in the garage. <laughs> so that was my first mural gig was a barter for my art school tuition at the age of 16. So, you know, I feel like I've always been on the professional track. And then after that, I got another mural gig in the neighborhood. And um, kind of just went from there. Yeah, and it just went from there. I mean, after college, I worked a lot in galleries. I did art education, after school art program. So, you know, I've done other odds and ends of jobs. And then it's in 2014 is when I actually um, suffered from a concussion and had a head injury and had to really be very cautious of my energy. And that actually was the time when I went full time into artwork because I just didn't have the energy to to give to any other art organizations or galleries or teaching. I just went full time healing mode and then art creation mode once I was feeling a little better from that injury. You have a very, very unique style when it comes to you creating. When at what point did you really like dial into your style and figure that out? Sure. Well, I've had different styles, you know, throughout my creative career. So earlier on, 
I did a lot of portraits. I painted a lot of people and I love those pieces. Uh, but then, you know, once I had my concussion, I really kind of shifted to really focusing on the color uh, and geometric works. I just really love the way that color can help to uplift our spirits and our mood and bring us more joy and harmony. Um, so that's really what I've decided to solely like really focus on at the moment. There might be a couple new dog doggy portraits in the future, just because I like in love with my dog currently. <laughs> um, I have to see some of your like actual subject matter artwork. Cause yeah. I, I've never seen you paint like a dog or a person or anything. I always well, seen I the can love give you a little stuff. studio tour at the end of our interview. If you'd we'll like to do that. Me. We'll have to do that. Yeah. Some older pieces. Let me ask you this. When you was in school, did you study color theory? Cause I know when I was at the Kansas City Art Institute, that was a big thing. And I noticed your colors sure. are really, really, really in line. Thank you. Uh, you know, we studied a little bit of color theory in college, but really my colors are derived from yoga theory and theories of subtle energy and the chakra system. Yeah. So there are seven different energy centers of the body, according to yoga theory. And the way I, I, and I like with this piece behind me, this is a seven color spectrum to relate yeah. to those different energy centers. So my colors are really based on ancient, principles of healing and i think that's actually why they are so impactful yeah. and powerful because of that they're definitely powerful like when I, it's it's hard not to know your work like when somebody see it it's hard to like forget it so being a full-time artist at this point as you mentioned since age 16 that was always the goal but how much do you typically sell your artwork for like what do prices start how expensive can it get Sure. Well, you know, prints can go from anywhere between like 100 to 500, maybe 600 or so. Um, and then original paintings are, you know, anywhere from $1,200 up to maybe $7,000, $8,000. And then the murals can depend really based on the size and the scale yeah. and um, the scope of work. You know, does the wall need to be cleaned or prepped? And, you know, how large is it? How much paint is it going to take? So I have kind of a formula of how I do the murals. But you get a really good value with the mural work yeah. uh, generally. And the, the, the larger, the more affordable, like per square foot, it ends up being. Um, but a lot of things kind of play into the pricing. So I have to kind of quote each project individually when it comes to the mural making. What's the most expensive mural project you did so far this year? This year? This year, just this year. Just this year, I did a $15,000 mural project. Yeah, which was a really good deal actually <laughs> for them. Um, Cause it was a quite a large wall and it needed a lot of prep work. Um, but it was a really impactful project and the project got really great press. It was the first love mural that I did down in St. Petersburg. Yeah. And it was a 50 foot by 25 foot wall. And, but we got uh, Tampa Bay Times wrote about it. It was channel on channel eight, channel nine. I was on Good Morning Tampa, which was a fun, interesting experience. Yep. You don't like those and morning news shows. Mm -hmm. I remember we was talking about some of those interviews. Just like, Gerard, I was in this interview. They had all these cameras. I, I was yeah. nervous. Oh my God. I, I feel like I've ruined it. Well, I'm happy to, I it know, but, I, but, I, but I, did a, I did a great job on it. It turned out really and good. I'm really grateful to you for everybody's interest in the work. Yeah. And for the artist that's as muralist, did you like, get paid 15,000 or did it cost 15,000 to do the mural? So the project cost 15,000. So, so or how much? like that was what the client paid me. Okay. For the so, project. And then with that being said, before we started working together, you was already a full-time artist. So what was the yeah. biggest struggle for you to then reach out and wanted to work with me? 
Uh, the biggest struggle for me was I, I've traditionally been really good at writing grants and putting proposals out to do my projects. So that's kind of generally how I've been creating these murals in the past or through different opportunities like that. But the thing is, is that they take, they're very time consuming to write. It, sometimes it takes a lot of time to know if you're gonna be awarded the project. Uh, the grants can be quite competitive and you know sometimes you can rock them and then sometimes there might be um, a hole in that. So the consistency of having a consistent income, you know, where I could land a, you know, $20,000 mural gig maybe this year, but am I gonna, but that's only gonna last me so long, right? Yeah. Um, so I really wanted to focus on selling prints, selling paintings, um, especially you know, studio inventory, which I have a lot of. So I came to you really to help with that. So I can have like a consistent income really throughout the year, um, not just seasonally during mural making season. Yeah. So basically you was making sales, but it's really inconsistent. It was mainly mural sales. Yeah. So let's say yeah. you make two mural sales in a year for 20,000 each is 40 grand, but just like, I don't know when I'm actually going to come in. I don't know how long it's going to take for this project to actually start. And you just wanted that consistency. Exactly. That makes sense. And when we had our initial call and you decided, you know what? I think I'm going to do this. Were you nervous as far as the investment, just getting started when it comes to working with me? Uh, I was excited. <laughs> is what I would say. I was excited. I was a little nervous. Yes, but I, I'm trying to... You know, there, there's a little bit of fear, you know, because it's expensive. And I actually did not have the money at the time. Like uh, November and December were definitely negative uh, months, income months for me. And I actually did not have the money to, to you know, for the program at the time. So I put it on credit. Um, and so there, there was a little bit of fear there and nervousness, but I just had a really good feeling about you in the program. I had done a lot of interviewing of other art coaches because uh, I knew that I needed help. I knew that there was something that was missing because I also knew people wanted my art. I know yeah. people love my paintings. You know, they love the murals. They love the paintings. They love the, the prints. Like, how do I just, how do I, but how do I get them to other people? And it was really, you know, the sales are great, but it also my mission is to, you know, share this love and color and positivity throughout the world to people publicly, but also in their homes is really quite important too. So the money's nice and it, the sales are good, but honestly, everything I make just goes back into the art practice. <laughs> it's just I'm, like- That's how it should be right now. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not doing, the, I'm not going on any like extravagant, holidays or buying crazy buying crazy things everything just goes back into the art practice because i am just absolutely obsessed with my work and for everybody to get a good understanding i know you mentioned you didn't have the money so before joining that's like those last i don't know four months how much would you average in per month i know you said the last two was negative so what about like the two months before that tough one Mm, it's a little embarrassing. <laughs> if you don't want to share, you don't have to share. It's totally up to yeah, you. Well, 2022 was challenging year for me. I had COVID twice. So, you know, normally June are, is a really great month for me, but I couldn't finish all my projects because I got COVID and I was, you know, I was, I was sick and then it kind of lingered. So my energy level was pretty low. So, I mean, I would probably say it was like at least 15,000 down within that last four months, you know, so I was, yeah. you know, I was probably like neg negative, you know, maybe like three to $4,000 a month at that point with expenses and bills. I had had yeah. some better months earlier in the year, you know, but so those last four I, is I, like I was, working, I was working with some other coaches too and I, just what they 
Yeah, I got some good things out of what some of the other coaches were teaching me, but it obviously wasn't working. Yeah. So I knew I needed to make a shift or find some other support. So just so I'm understanding where you was at, it's like last four months, about 15 grand total. So I say roughly about three to four grand a month. But when you like look at all your expenses and stuff, you realize like, holy crap, I'm actually on negatives. Something needs to change. Yeah. And on that initial call with me, because I think that was like the very beginning of January we talked. On that initial call, what made you decide? Like, what was that made you decide? Yep, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm in. Um, well, I liked the structure of the program. I liked that I could go through the modules on my own. Yeah. And then at my own time, because I wanted to go through them immediately yeah. as quickly We're as We're going to talk could. about that too. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of full time started listening, started going through it. And then also that there was the group coaching calls, like the two per week, I yeah. thought was great because I knew then that I could get, I could ask questions, I could get the support I wanted. And I also love that there was a big artist community of people who were, are in the training who are also providing support. So there was a lot of different like levels of support. Yeah. And I think that's pretty cool to be in a group of artists who all want to see each other succeed and are rooting for each other and are super positive yeah. and you know, everybody is just there to help each other crush it. You know, and it's not really about like what type of art you make or what your subject matter is. It's all about just like being a successful creative. And I just really enjoy being in a group like that. Yeah. Yeah. Every every single interview we did, everybody just talk about how much they love the group with all the other artists, just how interactive it is and all the results. Yeah. It's cool. So once you got started, I have every artist set a goal as far as a monthly target. What was your monthly goal on that initial call that you wanted My to earn My monthly goal month? is 20K a month. Wait, wait. Was that the oh, goal? No. I can't remember. I'm talking no, about the very our, first call. Well, I didn't tell you that, but that's actually my real goal. But on our call, I remember I said I wanted to do 60 grand in painting sales. Not murals, but like selling of the actual paintings. Yeah. I want to do 60 grand a year. So that was like five grand a month of painting sales. So five grand a month of specific painting sales. Right. Okay, perfect. And why was that the goal? What made you decide, you know what, that's what I want. Five grand per month selling the paintings. It just seemed like that should be doable for me at this level of my creative practice. You know, um, I had the work, I have the paintings available to sell. To sell. Um, so just like, that's the goal. I think I could do this. That's not my flag I should be set on. That's what I'm going after. Yeah, I thought, you know, if I'm, it would free me up to, if, you know, be a little more flexible with the mural making. Like if I didn't have a mural project at this particular, you know, on the off season, the, like right now it's super hot outside or when it's super cold outside, you don't really, those are right. hard times to be painting outdoors. So it would just help to bring some consistency to my creative practice and to my business. So then you end up getting started after that. It's the beginning of January. So then it'd been at this point for those watching six months we've been working together. Let's talk about like that first beginning let's say like first second third month once you got into the program after like the first 30 days what were you thinking i was excited after the first 30 days because i had made my money back already by that point <laughs> if you don't mind sharing just for those watching how much did you make in the first 30 days if you don't mind sharing i think i made
Well, I maybe made five grand probably within like maybe well, it might have been a little over 30 days, but pretty close. Yeah. Because I started crushing with art with the print sales. Yep. I remember you made a post about that with the print sales. Yeah, I had um, a post on a Facebook group go relatively viral. And I got a ton of contact, maybe got 800 comments on a post and just started. This was crazy from there. Yeah, and, and just got into a lot of conversations and um, you know, I think the one thing that really helped was just to like, keep it moving. You know, you're chatting with somebody, just, I just talked with as many people as possible. Yeah. That's what I always say. Like the more people you chat with, that's interesting in your work, the more sales you want to make. So with that being said, yeah. two questions. One, in this six month time span, and you already mentioned that your goal is now 20,000 per month. It so, is now, yes. Which is first, absolutely insane. <laughs> but what's the biggest month you had like in these last six months? The biggest month I had was April. I think I did 30, about 30,000 in April. 30 in one month. Yes, that's, that including, that's including painting sales, mural sales, and print sales, just so all the income streams together. Yeah. That month you yeah. feel like, holy right. shit, yep, we doing this. I was pretty excited. I was very busy, though, to be honest. I was like, too busy to be <laughs> I think we talked in April, and you was like, Dry, I have to talk, we have to do this another time. I'm super busy. I think we talked in April, and you yeah, was telling me like, how you're crazy busy. Yeah, you wanted to do this interview like a couple months ago and I just, I could not do it then. But that was a good thing. I'm like, okay, if you're busy, take your time. Do what you're doing. It was great, good. great month. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, it was great. And it really uh, boosted my confidence too. I was yeah. feeling a lot more confident in myself and in the work and in, um, you know, telling my authentic story what you know the program has really helped me do that too which is really it's just so valuable it's just like even just like priceless just the encouragement between your training and the group to really be authentic in my approach to how i'm putting my work into the world because i just you know my other coaches were just like way more too salesy yeah. You know, like, oh, do this discount here or do that, you know, and it just, I couldn't get into that. Like, I'm like, that's not, it didn't feel authentic to me where the program and the group and what we do is just about authentically communicating what the artwork is about and the message behind the work. And then people resonate with that message. And then if it, it resonates enough with someone then they buy the work you know that is really beautiful and it feels really good it doesn't feel gimmicky or salesy it feels authentic and honest and true and you know that was just kind of the energy that i got too from you um yeah. also when just listening to the youtube videos and then talking with you in person and I just thought, let's just take, let's just, um, let's give this a try. And honestly, the things that are taught in the training, no one else is teaching this. You know, I've been a practicing artist for a long time and I've never learned these skills, these types of sales skills and connecting authentically with people who are interested in the work like this. I mean, it's really a unique training. It's super valuable. Uh, I just think it's great. Yeah, and I appreciate yeah. that. So yeah. I'm actually taking back off that. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you mentioned how everybody in the side of training at this point, I'm very big against just being salesy or pushy or anything like that, yeah. right? So would you not being salesy, 
It's up to you if you want to. If it's up to you if you want to talk about it, I am going to kind of put you on the spot a little bit. Okay. You just hit a big number that's usually a lot of artists dream number, and you just hit that number. What it was like this week. This week, yeah. So first, is it okay if we talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about it because you know. I think it's important for us to talk about money, you know, especially like as before a you woman get into artist. it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let you say this. First, before you talk about how, how it's important to talk about money, which I 100% agree. First, just let's catch everybody up. So okay. I'm going to let you share it. Talk about a little bit of that big number that you didn't hit just within six months of this year. Sure. Well, this week I hit 100,000 in sales. So that was really exciting that I have, you know, a 6K, six figure, not 6K, six figure uh, creative art business is really exciting. Uh, you know, a lot of that money goes to me being able to live, me and my puppy being able to take care of ourselves. Uh, it also goes into supplies, into assistance if I need them, you know, all the things that I need to operate the business, the studio costs, uh, you know, like an occasional pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> Just on to, for, celebra for celebratory reasons when I'm not <laughs> crazy at work. But I actually want to talk about that a little bit. So I feel like and I, I really want to talk about it specifically with you. I feel like a lot of artists at this point, they probably see some of the artists we work with and you'll see these artists saying like, oh, I did 20,000, 10, mm -hmm. 15. I did a six figures this year. You did 100,000 just in the first half of the year. So we still have a whole yeah. second half of the year. Yes. But what people don't know, and I talk about this all the time, is your work ethic. So I want, I'm going to let you talk a little bit of this about work ethic and how you go through the training and what the typical life look like for Lisa Marita artist? Sure. Well, typically, I try to get up in the morning around 730, but it's normally closer to eight most days. <laughs> and then I will you know, do some stretching, do a little bit of yoga. I walk my dog. I get online. I do, I, you know, I'm, I'm selling a lot of what I did when I first was going through the training because I also drive a lot because I'm going to different places. So I'm always listening to empowerment books. I'm always listening to creative business books and I'm always, I'm listening to the training like on repeat pretty regularly or the bonus um, sections are really great too. Or sometimes I'll just go and listen to your YouTube, some of the YouTube videos again, just if like, Oh, I need a five minute, you know, boost in um, my mental, uh, my in my mindset. I'll take my dog to the dog bar and she'll run around and I'll just sit there while she's running around and I'll be working with compute, with my coffee, talking to clients. That's actually when my, my one post started going viral in January when I first did yeah. start the training, which was exciting. Um, and then, and then I paint a little too. You know? <laughs> and I want to talk about that. So I guess what I'm getting to is a lot of artists, they see these numbers and they want these numbers. And I always talk about like, you got to keep in mind when you're talking about six figures a year, yet alone yeah. just in the half of the year, those artists work their butt off. And it's not just like, I'm going to do a little bit of this and hopefully I can send my artwork, but it becomes a lifestyle. Like I literally called you about this interview and the first thing you said was, oh, Gerard, I was literally just listening to you in the car. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like it making a lifestyle to just learn the information and continue to apply it. And also understanding like you're creative, but also a business person at this point, because you have to also sell your artwork alongside creating it. Right. Well, the reason I listen to the training on repeat is because I want to have it be in my mind. So it's just it's memory. So it just becomes really natural because a lot of the ways that I've sold a number of different commissions recently are actually uh, by face-to-face -face communication with friends or people that I know. 
who people who I know who've always wanted paintings, but I've just never really had the knowledge or the skill set or have known what to say to actually sell them a painting. Yeah. You know, and like I think was you know, as a as a woman art, and I think this can be for any creative, but especially for women artists or LGBTQ plus artists, historically, you know, we have a harder time asking for the sale. So the script that is provided in the training just helped me know exactly what to say to ask for the sale in a really straightforward, non-emotional, simple way. Just say this. And so that's what I say. And then if they say this, you say that. And so that's what I, and so that's, it's, pretty simple it's pretty easy and i just listened to it over and over again so i really remember and i hop on the q a calls even though i don't have a question just because i like listening to people talk about selling art you know and it for me it's honestly it's not really the numbers are fun and it's encouraging and supportive and they are important you know to make things happen but you know the real mission is like just sharing that color and that joy authentically with everybody. So that's like my real why. And yeah. that's what really like wakes me up and keeps me going. Um, you know, making the pieces make me happy. And I want to share that with I everybody. Love I love the side note. I love how you try to like explain a conversation without explaining it. <laughs> you like, <laughs> Just in a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I say this, you say that. You say this, I say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the script is really, was really awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think the script is just so valuable uh, to have, to have that and to have learned those skills. You know, I don't think I really asked people for the sale before. It was easy in a grant, you know, I could write it all out. I could write everything out in a grant and then submit it. But that face-to-face -face yeah. conversation, that texting conversation with the buyers or people who want to support you and support your creative practice because you're inspiring them, you know, um, this has been feeling really good. And I have this crazy idea of painting love in all 50 states and connecting the country through love. So I just knew that I needed to have the tools and build the team to help support me in that. Mm. In Cause it's really, it's all, it's many different murals, but it's actually like one art project, one yep. just like big creative conceptual project. That's amazing. I love it. Just let me know when you come to Houston. Houston or Louisiana, just let me know. You don't okay. I'll, I'll be there. Out. I'll be, yes, you, uh, Jordan, you could help me find, maybe if you have a wall, you could be my ambassador to love for Houston. To like get you a wall or you, yeah. I could probably, I could honestly, and it, well, it depends on how big you want the wall to be, but I could for sure get you a wall in Houston. I mean, I could do a smaller wall or a larger wall. I would love to see you do a large one. I could talk to, I have a few friends that actually own some pretty big companies. And I just also just know a lot of people. So that may be a different conversation. Okay. I, I, I can possibly actually do that. <laughs> okay. We'll, That's we'll kind of how it. I'm going about it is I'm finding different ambassadors for love in different states. And then they're kind of helping me find the location or the yep. space. Or I can do that. I'm, I know for sure in, in New Orleans, that'll be easier. Cause I've only been in Houston for about two years. In New Orleans, I know that'll be really easy. But okay. I'm going to see about for Houston. Okay, great. We're gonna talk about it, and we'll talk about more about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that being said, you had a crazy first half of the year, right? Just hitting six thousand—I mean, six figures this week, and being literally cool. right at the half point mark of this year. That's great. But I always say there's some type of improvement. So if you had to give yourself, looking back now, if you had to give Lisa six months ago, just getting started training, advice. What advice would you give her? That's a great question. If I could give 
myself advice for when as I start training. Yep. As of Lisa today, talking back to Lisa when you first got started. We're in no rush. Take your time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what my what my advice to myself would be. I think I would just like tell myself like you are gonna do you're gonna do this. Just keep just keep going. Just keep keep moving forward. It's it's hard to give advice when you when you already crushed this like draw. I don't know what advice. I did what I thought I was should do. I, feel like I did it pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. I did pretty good. I did exactly. I mean, I what was I obsessed. I was obsessed with the training. I went through the training very quickly. I implemented it as quickly as I could. I was really. I needed the income pretty bad at that point because, like I said, I you know things were going on the credit at that point. So I really needed to start uh, shifting things around. So I. Just follow, you know, I would also just say, just like follow your intuition, which is really what I did. I had this intuition that the program was going to be really great. Uh, you know, I liked you because you weren't a gallerist and you weren't an artist and you weren't like an art teacher. You were, uh, it was in most, that's most of the trainings are those out there are those types of folks. So you just had a really unique perspective. And a lot of, and t I could tell like a lot of knowledge and I was excited. I was excited about that. Uh, you know, I would just tell myself, just like, keep going, keep moving. Like you're going to succeed. You're going to, this is going to happen for you. Um, I would also say, I would just encourage myself to like be brave, you know, cause part of telling my, it was scary to tell my authentic story. Yeah. of, you know, really why the love murals started and how they really came about originally. Um, you know, it was a vulnerable place. And I think that was the most difficult part of the training. But it was really impactful for people to hear, you know, my journey through of, of healing and some of some of the things that I'm we're not going to talk about it on this call, yeah. but um, you know, that vulnerability to be real and to be authentic. My word at the beginning of the year was authenticity. And when you're going to be authentic, you know, with anybody in person, intimately or even publicly, you know, there's a level of vulnerability there. Yeah. And that can be ch a challenge. Um, so I would just, I would just encourage, I would just be encouraging and supportive and. I think that's perfect. Myself. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Now you mentioned the, what was the biggest struggle? You kind of just talked about that being a struggle. So mm -hmm. with that being said, what was the biggest lesson out of everything? If you had to say one big lesson, what would that be from a training that you learned? I would say the one big lesson is just like how to ask for the sale. Just how to ask people if they want, would like, if they're interested in the work, <laughs> you know, and this, and how to, how to sell, how to just sell people paintings in a really kind and oh. authentic way. That's what I'm going to say. It's clear that your word for the year was authenticity and yeah. The key thing that you mentioned is just learning how to actually act for the cell in an authentic way. I think that's perfect. Yeah, you're not pushing it the sale on anyone. If they resonate with the work and they want it, then they'll buy it. But you allow that to happen. You just you create a pathway for that energy to flow. Yep. You know, you're not forcing it, and and it actually has. A lot of what I've learned in the training, I'm taking into like my personal life too, you know, with friends or relationships, you know, I'm not forcing things. Everything's just like flowing very naturally. Um, and I'm just kind of allowing the, that to be if it 
is to be. I agree. Yeah. I agree. For the people watching this interview, right? Being that artist who was, I just say, in a negative just in December and now six yeah. months later crossing six figures in our sales, what advice would you give to that artist? I would, it. my advice is to never give up, is to keep going. If something's not working, identify what's not working and move on, but never like give up on like the main dream. Like, you know, you have an important message, You're, you matter, your creativity, you, you know, is meant to be shared with the world. You're here for a mission. And that is to share your beautiful, creative, authentic selves and never give up on that dream. You know, it's it's a marathon. You know, it's not like a sprint, like a creative practice is something that you develop your whole entire life. So just just keep going, keep it moving. You know, if it's not working in one in one area, keep it moving, move, you know, shift, do something else. Um, and yeah just believe in yourself and you know you can do it and be yourself be your authentic be your authentic true self through the process and for the artist that's watched this and say you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna join the training what advice would you give that artist knowing that they about to get started with the training I always say, get excited, <laughs> get excited about that training. It's so good. <laughs> I, just, I would just say, get excited because you're going to learn some really cool stuff, stuff that I wish I knew to like 20 years ago. <laughs> I think, like, oh my gosh, I had this training 20 years ago. Oh, You'll be incredible. on top of the world I, right now. It's awesome. The training is just like so freeing because you're not dependent upon like a gallery system or some other type of structure or group of people, you know, it's really freeing. Like you are in control of your, of your sales and you are in connection with your customers, which I love that. I love talking to the people who are interested in my art. That like is so fun, mm -hmm. you know, to talk to people who resonate with what you're making is so cool and to inspire them. And that then inspires me and it just creates this great cycle. Um, so I would say get excited. You're going to be doing this training. You're going to learn so much cool stuff. Uh, there are going to be challenges, but that is how you create. Like when I'm painting and I am trying to create something, there's always a challenge. If you want to make something good, there's going to be a challenge there. Like this design it looks kind of simple and beautiful and geometric but i worked on perfecting this geometry for years people you know you might might seem not seem like it but like i did the triangle and different the v was in different ways and you know um you know, nothing everything worth doing is going to have like a little bit of challenge to it so embrace it um and just get excited. Get excited for this training. You're gonna learn so many cool things. You're gonna crush it. Here's the next question. Last two. Okay. If you going through the training now and work with me, having me as a mentor, if you had to give me advice, what advice would you give Droid? Oh, uh, what advice do I have to give Droid? I would say Mm, this is a good, that's, this is a great question. I would say sometimes, you know, you are very like to the point, which I think is good. But I think sometimes maybe you could be like, so there, there's a part of the training where you're trying to be authentic and it can, there's can be like, a, a, and it can be emotional, you know, for the artists 
you know, trying to understand why you're what, you know, what you're doing and trying to, yeah, trying to, you know, it's the chat, the, it is challenging. There is, there are some challenging parts to the training, but that's really, I mean, I think that's really good and that's why it's so successful. Um, so I think, you know, you could just ease up a little bit, ease up a little, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you know, I understand. I do understand uh, the the process. Kind of like you know, when you have a coach in sports, and they're like really trying to push you to be the best. You know, I I tell new artists because they get started. Just like you say, they're like, I'm excited. I can't wait. You just seem so cool. I say, hey, you meeting cool droid right now. But once we get started, success the only option. So cool droid don't be so cool all the time. Just just putting that out there. Like I, and then once the end, they actually get the C. But, yeah, I mean, you can be like a hard coach sometimes, you know. But that's because I really care. I just want, I just want yes, to be crushing it. I do. I but agree. I needs to ease that. up a little bit. I but, get thank, it. but thank you for for asking. <laughs> and then last, where do you see Lisa Marie in three years as an artist? Well, in three years, I'm gonna have a love mural in all 50 states. That's the start. 100. percent That's definitely going to happen. Additionally, I would really love to own my own art studio, like warehouse building, and I would like to have more of a more full time team of assistants, like helping me to produce the work. So. By three years, you know, all 50 states is just phase one of my together we can paint this world a rainbow journey. Phase two is all seven continents. So I don't know how we're going to do Antarctica yet, but I'm going to figure that out later. And then phase three is space. We're gonna take we're gonna take the art to outer space. I think that's freaking amazing. That's twenty thirty space space by twenty thirty. Three and, years we should maybe start. Maybe we'll go to Europe. And I love that because and that, this is the last thing we went in with this and we still got to see the studio by the way because you do it even though you say you want a nice studio you already have a freaking badass studio but I do I do. But I one thing I just want to say. Before we show the studio, uh, a lot of artists, they they just don't, I simply think a lot of visual artists just don't think big enough. They don't think it's possible to achieve um, the things that they genuinely would love to have. Like you just mentioned, people think fifth painting a mirror in all 50 states is absolutely insane. And you're like, no, drug. that's just phase one. Wait till you hear about phase three. I need a painting on the moon, right? And I think that's freaking <clears throat> phenomenal just to show, because I say the main reason artists don't succeed is because of mindset and the self-doubt, right? It's, it's, it's the limiting belief. So I'm happy you actually end up saying that. And I, I know you're going to do it. Like, I just know how hard you freaking work. Thank you. And what you already achieved this in the first six months is going to happen. But well, we're, we are doing it. True. We're I mean, done. you're... You're part of my team, you know, you're part of my team now. So, you know, I, we don't, you know, sometimes it's as painters or artists, we kind of get stuck in our studios because it can be a very independent process. The process of creation can be very solo, can be a very individual solo activity, yeah. but we don't live in a silo, you know, we don't live in a bubble. So, the work that you're creating, you know, by yourself in your studio, it has a life when it like lives and it communicates with other people and you bring other people into your creative practice in other ways. You know, that's one reason I just love the mural making because it's so much about community and coming together and building, you know, I have a team of people who are supporting me, Droid, you're one of them, you know, and I have other folks too who help me in different ways. And, you know, that's why I say, you know, together we can paint this world a rainbow because it really is 
about that team and finding the support, finding the people to support your creative practice. And definitely. Man, I'm so happy we ended up meeting. I'm happy you decided to get started. And this is, like you said, this is literally just the beginning of the journey. While we still have some time left, let everybody see this crazy studio you have. Oh, my, okay. Well, it's, so this is actually, do you, um, do whatever you, works for you. Do you study feng shui, droid? I don't. You would like it. So this is actually, this is my technical, this is my bedroom. This is the prosperity area of uh, my studio, which is why I thought it would be a good place for our call. <laughs> so here, we'll take you on a little. This is my puppy. That's Crown Sunday. Say hi, Sunday. She's very sleepy. <laughs> um, so I'm in St. Louis, downtown St. Louis off Washington Avenue. So this piece behind me is actually like 10 feet by 10 feet. It don't look that huge. Oh, that's actually huge. Here. You'll see it this way. You'll go like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big piece. <laughs> yeah, it's a great photo backdrop. I've used it for like a number of different events. Um, but this is the bedroom's pretty nice. So it's a live workspace. I like to have no commute. I hate commute, commuting. This is another rainbow piece, my love and kindness piece. And, oh, these are some figurative works. Oh, yeah. They actually look really, really good. I actually love yeah. those. These are from my, my yoga time. So it's the Anahata, like the heart opening series. Mm -hmm. And then right around here as I have my little kitchen and kitchen table, art supplies on it, of course. Uh, and then this is the office. So you can see years of uh, paint. I have a lot of inventory that eventually I will sell. <laughs> uh, and then- so A lot of selling to do. These are my love pieces, what, a different color for each different chakra energy center. So just really my exploration of color. Yeah. Like the teal one is for speaking from the heart. And then a number of different rainbow ones. I'm also in some circles known as the rainbow dragon because I've painted so many rainbow murals in our nation's capital. And then I have a number of other I pieces. love those two pieces, by the way. I've seen those pieces, I think, on your Instagram. And I love those two. Like, I love those colors. The brown one. And the gold mm -hmm. one, gold in yellow. This yeah, is especially like, that one. This is a confidence color. It's all about personal power, self-confidence, gold, prosperity, abundance. So, And these are all oil with just, like, a light dusting of glitter yeah i can see it so that's fun. yeah art supplies glitter paint brushes an insane amount of art books lisa you literally live like the dream art life <laughs> this is a beautiful studio i just am, i am very grateful for the space uh this is a big piece i did kind of recently i call that my raining rainbow series mm. more paint more paint and then i have a couple other uh love pieces here too this one is sold i'm just waiting for the final payment next month to bring to bring that one to the collector and uh these two i haven't put out in the world yet so we're the first to see we're the lucky ones yeah and the red one and that one's pretty cool too. Yeah, I love your work. I actually, I really love those yoga pieces you did. Like I never ever seen, you know, like figurative work of just like people. You said you had a few of pets or animals. Well, in the, I'm they are coming in the future. Okay, all right. Yeah, 
But I love those pieces. I love your creative yeah. style. I, I never seen that side of Lisa. I always seen the love pieces and the color pieces. Well, I think that those figurative pieces, I just needed to take a little bit of a break from making them for a while, but they'll come back. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, before I started the training, I was just like thinking about essentialism and like what was the most essential thing that I could be creating and painting. And that's when, you know, my love mural in DC, there's just been so many amazing people come to the mural and they photograph themselves with it and they share all these really positive messages of hope and equity and acceptance. And, you know, that just really inspired me. So that's why I'm really focused right now on the love pieces because the message I just think is, it's just such a great message yeah. for, for our country and for our world. So for Lisa, I had a freaking amazing year so far. I just got started on this journey. I think this was a really, really, really good interview. And it's the first time I actually did like a tour of a studio at the end. Oh, cool. So if you had the, what words, if you have any, that you'll leave everybody with that's going to watch this before we end. What are, did you say three words or just Any some words. words. I'd say what are words you want to leave everybody with? I'd say you have an important message. Your creativity and your work is valued in this world and we need you to put more of it out there. So, you know, believe in yourself and, you know, find the people to support you in that creative journey. You know, this is your, this is why you're here is to share this beautiful, beautiful part of yourself with the world. So shine bright and be an inspiration for others and, you know, love yourself more and let that love shine to the world. That's perfect. But anybody that want to find you after this, where can they find you? Sure. You can find me at Lisa Marie Studio on Instagram, on Facebook, and online. Or you can also follow the Love Mural as well. Okay, so perfect. send me a DM, a message me. I always reply. So I'd love to hear from you. Are you going to get a ton of messages? <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope so. And thank you so much for taking the time to hear my, about, my, about my journey. It really means the world to me that you've made it this far through the interview. So yeah. thank you so much. Hopefully we do another one in three years and you say like, yeah, Gerard just got back from the moon and made it there is in space. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Have a it's really gonna happen. I have an aerospace engineer friend. We are chatting about this. They're working on the technology for planes to, or for space shuttles to take off and land like a plane. So once that happens, take a little piece will be up there. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to end here. I think it was a really, really, really good interview. And yeah, to the next one. Till the next one. Thank you, Droid. Really appreciate you. Of course. Okay. See you next time. <laughs>